Welcome back to part two of this two-part blog series on bow tie risk assessments. Last week I provided an introduction to the bow tie, its purpose, use, benefits, and some of its limitations. Overall, I think it's a very useful tool for senior leaders to visualize their health and safety risks and importantly, the critical controls for eliminating or managing those risks. When this linkage is clear, you can easily identify what you know needs to be included in your performance reports, what types of assurance activities you will want to see are in place, and where best to allocate your resources. With that said, today I want to go a bit deeper into how you determine which controls are critical using the hierarchy of controls, a concept that is foundational to health and safety risk management. So much so that if you took nothing else away from this video, but a better understanding of the hierarchy, then I will consider this video a success. So let's get started. Hi there, I'm Samantha McGulrick and you're in the right place if you're a director or executive leading safe and healthy work in the boardroom or C-suite. As a senior business leader, it is necessary that you have a very good understanding of your critical risks and their associated critical controls. In fact, in part one of this two-part series, I stated that you need to be intimately familiar with your critical risks and controls. And when you have this state of awareness and comfortability, you are in a much better position to understand how your decisions at an executive level will impact health and safety outcomes at the coalface. Additionally, you're in a much better position to ensure that your performance reports include monitoring implementation and effectiveness of those critical controls. The power of the bow tie is that it gives you a great visual representation of your critical risks and controls. But now that you have that overview, I wanna take a step back and provide some context around how you determine which controls are considered critical. One of the foundational principles or concepts in managing health and safety risks is the hierarchy of controls. You have probably seen or heard of this inverted triangle at some point in your career, but this is a really important concept and it will be of benefit to all of you watching so if you're multitasking right now, just pause for a second and come back to me if you can and give me your full attention. One of the most common questions I get from clients is, Sam, how far do we really need to go in terms of risk management controls? This is a fair question because you need to know where best to invest your resources. At a basic level, the hierarchy is a framework that starts with you thinking about how to eliminate a hazard or risk before you think about how, control it, how to control it. The hierarchy walks you through how far you need to go in terms of controls. It's the beginning of that conversation. And the simple answer is the more serious or critical the risk, the further up the hierarchy you need to go. This means the more critical the risk, the more important it will be for you and to a greater extent, the more it will be expected of you to introduce high order controls. Now I bet you're thinking, here's another term I don't wanna need to understand, Sam, don't do this to me, but just take a deep breath, I won't complicate this for you. Firstly, high order controls don't rely on people, low order controls do. The less reliance there is on people to implement the control, the better, and stronger the control. These controls are higher up the hierarchy and therefore referred to as high order controls. For example, the airbag in a vehicle is a far better control than the seatbelt. The reason is simply this, the seatbelt has to be put on. So there is a reliance on the individual to put it on to save them in the event of an incident. Whereas the airbag will be activated in an incident regardless of whether someone turns it on or not. That's not to say that you have to have only high order controls in place and should refrain from all low order controls. On the contrary, the seatbelt and the airbag are a great example of this. They complement each other in keeping the passenger safe. The critical messages that I want you to walk away with here are 
One, the hierarchy of controls is a framework that walks you through how to determine your controls. From those that will eliminate a hazard or risk down to the bottom of the triangle with putting on your personal protective equipment like a high-vis vest. And two, always seek to eliminate a hazard or risk before thinking about how to control it. And three, the more critical or serious the risk, the longer I want you to spend higher up the hierarchy to identify those higher order controls. So that's a brief overview of the hierarchy of controls. As I said, it's a foundational to health and safety risk management. Now that you have a good understanding of the hierarchy of controls and the bow tie, let's have a look at this quick video that will bring both these concepts together. In this second bow tie animation, we look at controls, a crucial part of the bow tie. But first, let's review what we've covered so far. A bow tie offers insight into the contributing factors, consequences and risk controls of a specific hazardous event. The hazardous event is the point at which control of a hazard is lost. On the left-hand side of the bow tie, we identify the factors that may contribute to a hazardous event. On the right-hand side, we show the potential consequences of the hazardous event. Controls are shown on both sides. Preventative controls help prevent a loss of control in the first place. Mitigative controls help reduce the severity of a consequence following a loss of control. The power of a bow tie is that it gives an overview of multiple possible scenarios and a range of controls in a single view. This makes it easier to understand a risk and how it is best controlled. Today, we will look at controls in detail. Having the right controls in place is what keeps everyone safe. The hierarchy of controls shows the order in which controls should be prioritised to achieve the best safety outcome. Always seek to eliminate a hazard or risk first. If it cannot be eliminated, then higher order controls should be chosen from the hierarchy, substitution, isolation, engineering. Training and admin controls and PPE are considered lower order controls. Ideally, they should be used together with stronger controls. Once all controls are identified on the bow tie, we need to determine which controls are critical. A control is considered critical if the risk would be significantly increased without it or if its presence significantly reduces a high consequence risk. Thinking about critical controls helps us focus on higher order controls as the primary means to keeping us safe. They also highlight areas where our assurance activities and efforts should be spent. Let's look at a bow tie used for working near utilities and the controls used to manage the risks. The hazardous event in this bow tie is strike with underground service. If we look at poor design and planning of worksite as a contributing factor, we can see that six preventative controls have been identified and assessed. Our focus should always be on preventing hazardous events in the first place. Five mitigative controls have also been identified and assessed to lessen the impact of injuries or fatalities due to utility strike consequence. Critical controls are shown with a red tab. There is a detailed description of the control and an indication of where in the hierarchy of controls it sits. In this example, we can eliminate the risk through safety and design by relocating the underground cables prior to commencing work. We can isolate the risk by establishing exclusion zones and marking out the underground service route. We can select and use appropriate plant and equipment with fitted safety features to excavate around underground services. These critical controls are essential to protect our workers from injury or death. In summary, controls are the most important part of the bow tie. They keep you safe. So in choosing controls, preference must be given to higher order controls, elimination, substitution, isolation, engineering. Critical controls allow us to focus on preventative, higher order controls, as without them, the risk would significantly increase. Bow ties help us to visualize and highlight all the critical controls in place to manage a specific WHS risk. 
Bow ties form part of our agency safety risk register under the One RMS Safety Management System. For more information, visit rms.nsw.gov.au forward slash safety. As stated in the video, the controls are the most important part of the bow tie. Well, they're the most important part of any risk assessment because controls are what keeps people safe and healthy. But what's great about the bow tie is that you get the benefit of visualizing those controls that help you prevent the incident from occurring and those that help you mitigate the damage once the incident has occurred. Additionally, you get a clear picture of where your controls sit in the hierarchy. In the video, you would have seen that the controls considered critical are those controls that significantly reduce the potential of an incident occurring. So if you focus your resources on controls that are preventative and higher up the hierarchy, you are in a good place. And the bow tie really is a brilliant tool to help you do this. I mentioned earlier and in part one of this two-part series, and you would have seen in the video that once you know the controls that are preventative and critical, higher up the hierarchy, you can then see how you can take those controls and develop indicators and other assurance activities around them. Now remember, it's not that I expect you to develop those indicators and identify assurance activities. I wanna help you recognize what you are not receiving or are receiving so that you know what to ask for and then when you need to act. So linking your indicators and assurance activities to the critical controls in the bow tie is yet another benefit to using the bow tie. It's not just a visual representation of risk management, it provides traceability to your health and safety management system, including your governance and assurance activities. And this, my friend, is how you're going to feel more confident that you are managing your critical health and safety risks. I hope you have found today's video useful. When you're finished watching this video, I'd love to know, do you use bow ties in your business? If so, has it helped you in your leadership responsibilities? Leave a comment below and let me know. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with others who you think may benefit. If you want to get a regular dose of what to ask and when to act, hit that subscribe button and connect with me on social media like Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. If you're interested in diving further into content like this, head over to my blog at smsafetysolutions.com.au. And while you're there, be sure to check out my 2018 Director Dashboard. It's another tool that I've produced to assist those with health and safety governance responsibilities in knowing what to ask and when to act. Thanks for watching. Until next time.